Hey guys, so this video should be pretty quick. Uh, converting CFGs to PDAs is relatively simple. There's just a few, oops, there's just a few rules to remember. So the first thing we need to do is we need to place the start variable on the stack. Number two, we have to account for all inputs on all variables. So I'm going to be doing an example after I list these steps and you'll see what I mean. And for every terminal A we want to pop it from the stack essentially. Okay so I'll add a little example of number three here. Um, you do this for every single terminal so if you have a terminal B you do the same thing for B. So that would be like Q, B, B, and then exact same thing. You're just popping from the stack. Now for this number three rule, if we end up with a grammar that contains something like this, we count epsilon as a terminal. So we would end up with something like this because an epsilon on a stack means popping from the stack. Um, we're just going to use the empty stack symbol. So if we end up with an epsilon, we use the empty stack symbol here because we can't use epsilon on the stack. Again, that would just mean we're popping stuff, but that's not what we're doing on the left-hand side. But it's what we're doing on the right-hand side. So again, we're just treating it as a terminal. So let's try out a basic example. Okay, so for this one, our start variable is inevitably A, so we need to put A on our stack, so we have an epsilon input, we will have an empty stack, and what we want to end up with so we want to end up back at Q. We're only ever going to have one state with these. Your PDA will always have one state. And we're going to end up with A on top of the stack. Okay. Now we're going to do step two. So on Q an epsilon transition but we have an A on the stack. We do this for all variables by the way so if we had like little a, big A, big C, and then little b then you would do this for big C as well. Sound like a child. Capital C. <laughs> and then a Q and we're matching it to its transition. So our stack ends up looking like that. And then we have another transition as well. Okay, so we're done step two. And now on to step three for each, for every terminal input pop from the stack. Right, so we only have three terminals including epsilon. So on Q, if we got an A, and A is on the stack, then we're at Q again, we pop, but not least we account for the epsilon and again we do the empty stack symbol instead and we pop okay so I'm going to move this here because now we're going to draw our PDA so this is Q you know, this isn't actually a final state because Q will accept by empty stack. 
but this is an initial state. We will only have one transition. It's going to be a chunky one. And now we just follow what we've already written. So let's look at this first line here. So if we have an epsilon input, the stack is empty, then we will add A onto the stack. If we have an epsilon input and A is on the stack, then we will end up with that transition. Also, if we have an A, then we can end up with popping it. Okay, and now for our terminals. If we have A as an input, A is on the stack, pop, P, P, pop, and epsilon is at zero. Okay, so the importance of this, it's actually kind of interesting because the reason why we do this is to prove equivalency. You're not just converting a context-free grammar to a push-down automata, you're proving equivalency between a context-free grammar and a push-down automata. The theory states that any language that is made, any context-free language that is made by a CFG, can be accepted by a PDA and vice versa. So this is what that proves. This is essentially just a proof. Um, anyway, I hope it helped. Um, yeah, feel free to subscribe and thumb up the video and suggest ideas for new videos.